Hey, everybody, it's John from The Hustle Daily Show. Before we get into the news today, did you know that HubSpot launched an AI chatbot that helps you build awesome campaigns at scale with just a few prompts? It's called Campaign Assistant, and it's a totally free to use AI tool that will transform the way that you build marketing campaigns at scale. And the best part, it works seamlessly with all of HubSpot's marketing and sales tools to scale your output across email, social, and more. So AI your way into the most effective campaigns yet at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. Howdy, folks. It is Monday, April 17th. I'm Jacob Cohen, and you are listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Today we're talking about new stories in AI from Musk's new company to Google hitting the gas on its AI plans as others have seemingly come out of nowhere in the search space. But before we get to all this, let's take a quick look at what else is happening in the world of business and tech. Let's get crack a All right, first things first, Sega is reportedly on the verge of buying Rovio Entertainment of Angry Birds fame in a blockbuster billion-dollar gaming acquisition. If closed, the deal would give Sonic the Hedgehog some angry-looking avian friends and forever change the business landscape of the boys' t-shirt clearance rack at Target. And elsewhere in the game sphere, that's a Drake and Josh reference for those uninitiated, coming off an insane record-setting opening weekend, the Super Mario Bros. movie has barreled its way to $678 million globally as of Sunday, and its second weekend out, it's the number one release of 2023 and widely expected to hit the billion-dollar mark at the box office. Moving along. Apple says 100% of its batteries will be made with recycled cobalt by 2025. Only 25% of its cobalt usage last year was recycled up from 13% in 2021, so pretty ambitious here. But if anyone can do anything ever, it's probably the company that came into the year with more than $50 billion in cash on hand. And in other news on the Apple Orchard, Apple made more than $7 billion worth of iPhones in India Last year, tripling production there as it looks to move manufacturing outside China. Almost 7% of iPhones are now being made in India, up from around 1% in 2021, according to Bloomberg. The company is also reportedly in talks to produce MacBooks in Thailand. Following the launch of MacBook production in Vietnam later this year, the company has already been producing the Apple Watch widely in Thailand for over a year. Okay, up next, whenever one social media platform has a popular differentiator, it's only a matter of time until others follow suit. Case in point, Instagram rolled out new editing and discovery features for Reels this weekend that honestly feel very TikTok-y. And speaking of TikTok, the state of Montana approved a bill that would make it illegal to download the app in the state with penalties of up to $10,000 a day for any entity like Apple or Google's app stores, or even TikTok itself that makes the app available to download. And the GOP-controlled Montana House of Representatives sent the bill on Friday to Montana's governor, who can now sign it into law. You could see this going to the Supreme Court eventually, but we'll see what happens. And in other news, perhaps you've heard of cannabis. This apparent wonder plant is doing big business. A new forecast from MJ Biz shows U.S. sales topping $33.5 billion this year, enough to outsell some other vices, including craft beer and even chocolate. Also, beginner's luck. Japan will get its first casino in an $8.2 billion, 5.3 million square foot complex in Osaka. It's expected to open in 2029. Also, how about this? The rollbacker has become the rollbacky as Walmart sold off menswear brand Bonobos for $75 million, a whopping $235 million less than it paid for it in 2017. Bonobos will blend operations with fellow retailer Express in the deal. Maybe you could call this Walmart being racked with guilt. Moving along. In this labyrinth where night is blind, the Phantom of the Opera ledger will blow your freaking mind. Andrew Lloyd Webber's Phantom ended its record-setting 35-year run on Broadway, but not before grossing $1.3 billion in New York City alone. Its tourist productions worldwide were separate cash cows. An uneven COVID recovery thinned the margins for some Broadway shows. For Phantom, increased operating costs of $950,000 a week were reportedly unsustainable. 
Also, it's hard to complain about a $1.3 million compensation package unless you're Amazon CEO Andy Jassy, one year removed from a $212.7 million haul. As jarring as that drop may seem, that's all according to plan. In 2021, Jassy received that $212 million or so in stock awards, which will vest over 10 years and drive a bulk of his comp over that time. With no further stock in 2022, Jassy was left with his measly $317.5,000 base salary and $981,000 in 401k contributions and security costs. Also, how about this? What's eating at in-office employees? Not just their commute, but also a lack of, uh, you know, actual eating, it seems. Decision intelligence company Morning Consult found 63% of remote workers eat breakfast daily compared to 53% for in-person workers, obviously many of whom eat on the go. That's interesting. And before we get to the main story, tomorrow is tax day in the U.S. You may want to grumble at that, but at least you can take solace in not being a Swedish Bitcoin miner. The Nordic nation will abolish tax incentives for data centers this summer, amounting to a prohibitively expensive 6,000% tax increase per kilowatt hour of energy. The Bitcoin mining sector drawn in by massive 2017 tax cuts hasn't fueled the job growth Sweden was seeking and Now it may be curtains. All right, now let's get to the AI news rundown. All right, so the first story of note deals with someone you may have heard of, Mr. Elon Musk, who has reportedly incorporated a new artificial intelligence company in Nevada that goes by the name of X.AI Corp. So Mr. Musk has reportedly been actively recruiting researchers to establish a rival initiative to OpenAI. He co-founded OpenAI, but left in 2018. Has expressed concerns about political bias and other dangers of large AI models. To spearhead this effort, he's reportedly hired a top scientist from the AI lab owned by Google or Alphabet called DeepMind. And as for the name X.AI Corp, the company is using the same name associated with his ambitious kind of general vision of an all-encompassing app known as X. Recently, Twitter under Musk's ownership rebranded itself as X Corp and also shifted its incorporation from Delaware to Nevada. The name X also holds personal significance for Musk, too. His early online banking startup, which eventually turned into PayPal, was called X.com, and it's also the name of one of his kids. How about that? Shifting gears a bit to a different story, the New York Times reported on Google's rapid plans to basically just continue keeping up with OpenAI, ChatGPT, and Microsoft's investment in the AI-driven search engine space. According to internal documents, the company is now rapidly prototyping new AI features, many of which uh, sound similar to those available through things like ChatGPT and the new Bing. Uh, The urgency here is is all apparently kind of underscored by a, a risk of Samsung possibly considering replacing Google with Microsoft's Bing as the default search engine on its devices, a development Google employees were reportedly panicked about, and that contract represents $3 billion in annual revenue, so panicked is an understandable (laughs) thing to be. Now, some of these new features, which are being developed under the project name Maggie, apparently include new AI tools for Google Earth, new conversational chatbot tools, a tool to use AI to generate images and Google image results, another tool to help people uh, be tutored in learning new languages through AI text conversations, and another tool called Search Along that would let users ask a chatbot questions uh, while surfing the web. Google's expected to release some of these tools potentially to the public next month to a million users and to potentially 30 million people by the end of the year. All this is to say, this is sure to be an interesting year for search and Google's search business, especially possibly the most interesting in many years. But as always, let's see what happens. And bada bing, bada boom, that's going to do it for us today, folks. Thanks for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Ezra Trupiano. Our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter, which you can sign up for at thehustle.co slash email. Hope you have an awesome Monday. Catch you tomorrow.
Hey guys, if you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.